shuts every one of them down. That's a full team kill. That's so that that another. He's looking for third. Oh. He's gonna get it. Not the kill. And Vastek's gonna find it. Oh, he finds that shot. He finds two. Hey. He's still alive. Can he go in? Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. He's gonna go bar down. He give Saints the lead again. Welcome everybody to St. Clair Saints League of Legends. I'm John Bilbangs Dima, joined today by Josh Fundy Pafundi. And we got week four action here in the NECC. St. Clair Saints going up against our Ontario rival in McMaster Maroon. And it should be a good game. Uh, they had a pretty close preseason game against them. They ended up winning it, so we should get another one. Get another good game here. Yeah, it should be a pretty strong game. Like I, we've seen McMaster before. Like all, they're always very strong. They had you know a very very good Ivern in preseason yeah. that we were talking about uh, before the game. But pretty interesting today. We are playing on a new patch, and Renata Glass is available in collegiate in NECC. Uh, so maybe we will see some spicy picks today. Uh, but yeah. we're we're just gonna have to find out. I think so. I think it'll be interesting if we see her. I think she. It is a very specific team comps. I feel like we were talking before too, like kind of like the zillion role where you have someone who's you're all ending on it, get that revive. And then, you know, it, and I mean, it works into the hyper carry team comp, right? Obviously For you sure. have your Jinx, you have your Philios. If they can stay alive in a fight, if they, I mean, even if they go down, if there's an assassin that ends up taking down, but they trade out, it's so huge to get that carry back. And I mean, especially in late game fights, it really could turn the tide of the entire entire thing. So it'll be interesting to see if they go towards that. Um, I mean, the other thing that has been kind of creeping up in power is the mage bot lane. And something like sure. a Vigar, Karthus, um, there's a couple other mages I've seen as well. Syndra a few times. Yeah, a few Syndra uh, as well. So something we've seen in the past a lot too. Yeah, it should be interesting to see. Maybe team comps want to go towards that mage bot lane. Because I feel like outside of the Jinx of Philios and then like Caitlyn Lux maybe, those are really like the two bot lane combinations yeah. we see a lot. Yeah, unless we end up seeing like a pick like a Zeri or something who, mm -hmm. uh, granted, we have seen like perma band almost, except yeah. for the few games that uh, St. Clair has actually been able to pick it out. So, yeah, bot lane's just kind of stale right now, unfortunately. Yeah. We haven't seen the picks being shaken up too much. So something like a mage bot lane uh, definitely would... It would provide some excitement, to say the least. Yeah, I think for me, too, I was thinking about this earlier today. And the fact that, like, hyperscaling hyper bot lanes are so strong right now. And Unleashed Teleport is is now, you know, in the game. And the fact that top lane, I feel like, doesn't have as much impact around the map. And yes, you do. And even for mid laners, I don't think they have as much impact on the map. Just because the bot lane meta is so strong. And early on in the game is really where you're supposed to get at it. But, yeah. you know, if you're not playing an aggressive jungler and you're playing just a standard top laner, it's really tough to get at that bot lane. And then by the time you get a laning phase, they are the strongest lane in the game. And, and then again, you want to index into scaling more. And I, I just feel like right now it's not the most exciting meta in the mm -hmm. world. But hopefully moving forward, we're going to see some more exciting stuff. Maybe some crazy off meta picks. I mean, Janice might come out of nowhere, so you never know what yeah. we can see. We, we, yeah, and then we also saw like Tank Akali for a bit, which yeah. was granted like kind of dumb, yeah. but it was <laughs> it something was. to shake it up. You it's know true. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's nice to see like big, just out unorthodox picks. That's the word I need to use. Just unorthodox picks that kind of come out of nowhere, and you're just like, yo, why is this so good? Yeah, right? it's, and it's cool to see them because it changes your perspective on how to play the game, right? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, some of them are great. Some of them aren't so great, like Funnel. But uh, hopefully, you know, yeah, we see <laughs> some more stuff like that, small changes. And I, I really do hope we see some kind of uh, jungle changes because I think right now even junglers, pretty standard jungling, nothing too crazy. You have Jarvins and Zhao. Um, you know, you throw maybe even Gwen Scaler in there, and she did get nerfed in jungle, unfortunately, mm -hmm. which I was kind of hurt by because I was yeah. playing a bit of Gwen jungle, and it was feeling very, very strong. And you know, now it got hit by the nerf fed. I think you are stuck going back towards Jarvan, and Zin did get nerfed slightly, slightly but it wasn't. But yeah, too, I don't it feel wasn't, like yes, I don't feel like it's gonna big. touch him too much. Yeah, yeah. like one second. What was it one second extra cooldown on his W? So yeah. that went to uh, from eleven to twelve. And then, like, one second less on his, uh, like, ranged invulnerability, yeah. which it's good. And especially 
with how strong bot laners are, like mm-hmm. we've been talking about, yeah, it makes him less strong into those, but that's just feeding into how strong yeah. the bot lane is, and that's feeding into how strong Jinx and Aphelios are going to be. Like, and they haven't, we were looking about. at the patch notes, they haven't touched either of those they champions in the patch notes either, so it's almost like they want, it's weird because it feels like they want to feed into this meta, which is not exactly the most exciting meta, but, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like as the season goes on too, it always happens though, you think about metas shifting, typically, in the early on in the season, especially because a lot of times you're getting new players on teams and new coaches, new management, all that stuff is coming together. You want to play super standard comps, right? You yeah. want to play a scaling ADC, um, tank, engage support, uh, scaling mid laner, uh, maybe either an assassin or a like a utility jungler, and then you have your standard tank top laner, right? Like, because that's really easy team comp to play around. It's protect the ADC, get your ADC mid ahead, and then push your carries forward, and it's really comfortable and easy to play. I think later on in the season, that's when you start seeing a lot of different changes, and, you know, when teams get comfortable with each other, that's when you start seeing meta-breaking stuff, and, and yeah. I think that's where teams need to start looking towards, because we are only, you know, three months into the season, but regardless, like, looking forward, I think... Uh, you know we're halfway we're almost halfway through these seasons i think that's when you start looking towards a little bit more off meta stuff to help you out yeah for sure another thing i want to talk about we did see a hull breaker nerf yeah, for yes. for range champions specifically which personally i am so happy about i think i think that's where it was it heading was, right yeah and it, the thing is it was forcing top lane like we already said top lane has very little impact right now yeah. and it was forcing top laners to just pick the ergot pick the graves and while we haven't seen too much Holebreaker in Collegiate, uh, like recently, at least with the Saints, uh, it's just, it's so annoying to yes. play against, honestly. You're, you're getting a Gore Drinker, Holebreaker, Graves, who is healing out of his mind. You can't yeah. duel him. Nobody can fight him, and he's just going to constantly push the side lane. Same thing with Urgot once he gets, uh, I think it's, is it level 9 the, that he gets his, like, infinite W? Yeah. It's just, it's... It's really just unhealthy for the game, in my opinion. Say, and, like, it also feeds into this, like, whole wait till later on in the game to start doing something, right? Because, yeah. like, Hullbreaker, you're forcing your top laner to split, right? Yeah. Because that's the whole point of Hullbreaker. He wants to just AFK the side lane. Your hyper carry ADC also just wants to AFK the side lane and farm up. So, like, you're getting these games, again, where you think back to a couple seasons ago where you're seeing these, like, super low kill games because people don't want the interaction in the early game. And you try and index as much map pressure as you can get and try and force people into side lanes, farm up. And then when your ADC hits four items, five items, that's when you're like, okay, now we can actually go fight when we're 40 minutes into the game and there's four kills across the board. Yeah, it's funny too how like complete of a flip it was from the end of uh, season 11 where you were seeing Tiana, yeah. Talon jungle, Zed jungle, right? They were trying, Riot was trying out all these things and like in essence they buffed damage. So they buff burst damage super hard, but then coming into coming into season twelve, they nerf the burst damage, and then healing is super broken, and sustained damage yes. late game is is the strongest. It's the strongest pick in the game. It's the strongest yeah. playstyle to play around, and there really isn't much you can do when you get to a level like collegiate, where it's two very strong teams facing off of each other, and you're almost forced to pick meta because it's that good. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. We are going to be getting into champ select tier sometime very soon. Um, in the meanwhile, though, I want to talk about how St. Clair has done. All the standings have looked uh, in the NECC over the past uh, four weeks. It's definitely been a pretty mixed bag of results yeah, for, for both sure. of these teams. None of them sitting too far at the top of the standings. But mm-hmm. you can see here now St. Clair at 1-2. And, and we see McMaster Maroon sitting at 0-1. So, for reference, a couple of these teams did get moved up from the lower mm-hmm. division into this top one. So St. Clair, obviously you can see being one and two has been in this division for quite a while. And you see there's four teams there with just one game played. So McMaster Black and Maroon, the Queens Golden Gales and UBC Onyx have all been moved up from a lower division and have only played that one game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, we saw that. Uh, we did face UBC last week. They put up like a pretty a pretty good fight, I'd say. Um, but the Saints were just able to edge it out in the end. And uh, we got some nice plays there from, especially from Zephyroth last mm-hmm. week on the Ari, who is another champ that has been touched a little bit. Uh, but I don't think she's been touched too much. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if we see another Ari pick, uh, especially how comfortable Zephyroth looked on her. Uh, I would not be surprised. If I think see she's that still sure. super strong in the meta just because of the way they changed her ultimate. It gives her so much extra mobility in fights and allows you to like chain together your abilities so that that I feel like for Ari specifically, there was that kind of cooldown period you had to wait between your bursts. 
now with Ari having that extra, you know, ability to dash after a kill, you can chain those into multiple combos and be a lot more mobile. And I feel like it fed into a lot more of, you know, what Ari was meant to be like. Which, yeah, which for was sure. I felt like for the last couple of years, especially, just not really what players are feeling. Yeah, for yeah, before the rework, right? She was she had her gas, but once she used that tank, it was it was yeah. over. She was caught out, and you had to burn a summoner spell to try and like get out, right? You have to burn a flash here, mm -hmm. or you're saving your last R dash for that when you could be using that to pick up an extra kill yeah. or the like. But now that she has those resets, uh, it definitely did help out her playstyle, but maybe a little too much, right? Yeah, because uh, she's very safe in lane still. She has insane insane sustain in lane. Uh, and and of course the charm is a great CC tool. Mm -hmm. It's gonna force them to walk towards you, so you can get your entire combo off. Her Q is going through minions anyway, uh, so it's really just dependent on hitting that E, uh, and then you have your entire burst combo available. Yeah, so that sounds bit. Sounds like we should be getting into draft sometime very very soon. And you know for Saint Clair, they played McMaster Maroon a couple times. They played them preseason, very close game. They ended up winning it out. Last season, I believe they played their best of three series. St. Clair won it 2-1. So multiple times, there's been very, very close games between these two teams. St. Clair has won it out. But I'm looking for Master Maroon to try and strike back here and get you know, a win for themselves. Yeah, and I'm interested to see the bans, right? I'm interested to see if a team just decides to flat out ban Renata to not have it in the game. It'd be interesting to see if they go for that. And I mean, like I said, I feel like Renata has a specific place in the meta. I don't know if it's going to be super strong right now, but be interesting to see if teams decide that uh you know they do want to start playing that one out and see how it works but first ban for mcmaster gonna be yasuo here not something we've seen on the ban list that often so but we have seen ricky play a very it's strong true. yasuo in the past weeks especially last i think it was last week against you to be honest if yeah. i'm not mistaken yeah uh because we have seen him in a few games this season actually pulling out the yasuo uh but the graves ban as well coming out from st Clair college like we said Holebreaker did get the nerf. Graves still super strong in the top lane because he still has options to go for that, uh, just the Immortal Shield Bow Bloodthirster build, yeah. which you're still basically a tank because of the amount of healing you have. Uh, so you don't even have to force the Holebreaker. He has so many options in that top lane. Yeah. We are going to get the Twisted Fate Bane here to Master Maroon. So it's surprising because typically we see like uh, Jax ban, Aatrox ban, and then, you know, something that's like super meta that's banning it to other teams to get ricky off of those champions but it seems like those have kind of dropped in priority for these teams yeah for sure and yeah twisted fate another one of those mid laners right the roaming mid laner that actually can support your bot lane yeah. right a super priority pick this season and we are going to see the hecarim ban coming out of st Clair college hecarim has been tearing up yeah. solo queue pro play uh turbo chem tank right he gets in there he's super fast it's going to give him ad as well and he just has crazy engage uh, and it's really good to round off team comps that don't really have that engage. Yeah. Let's say you're picking like a bruiser top laner or, or a split pushing top laner like the Graves, like maybe a Fiora who's not the strongest, but still definitely can uh, put up a fight there. I, I think for me too, Hecarim specifically, like he kind of fills a lot of different roles. Like like he has, like you said, Turbo Come Tank for his tank party. He has really, really good engage. He has really, really good gank potential as well because of the early move speed he gets. So he kind of fills in so many different roles as a jungler that it's really yeah. easy to just stick him into any team comp and it works. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we are going to see the Aatrox ban coming out from Master Maroon, target ban towards Ricky in the top lane, and the Zeri ban coming out from St. Clair College. Uh, pretty... I, I, I'd say it's pretty expected considering yeah. that McMaster has first pick here. So getting rid of Zeri, uh, definitely. And it's, I mean, despite all the Zeri nerfs that came through in the last patch, still a priority. Yeah, still a priority pick, still scales super strong into the late game. Uh, and it's it's the prime reason we've been seeing her almost 100% banned uh, in NECC here. And we do get the Senna pick first from McMaster Maroon. I, I like to see this. I, I yeah. play Senna myself, so I love to see Senna come out. Uh, and especially with these changes that they gave to her uh, coming into this season, uh, it's nice to see that she is back in meta. But once again, another one of those champions that feeds into the scaling play. Yeah. I think it, it's probably going to be a fasting Senna. Um, usually paired with something like the Tom Kench. Could possibly be paired with the Renata as well. Not as strong, but definitely something viable. Oh, so Tom Kench is actually banned because of a bug here, not the sure. <laughs> the invisible bug, I believe. Oh, uh, Yeah, okay. so with Senna, you can uh, you can go into Senna's shroud there, and then if Tom Kench eats the Senna, it makes 
everyone invisible, like not n basically non-existent. Wait, on really? The rift. Yeah. So imagine like walking around the jungle and a Senna and all four of her teammates get spit out of a Tom Kench's mouth, and and that's what you're. Uh, oh, that's okay, basically wow. what happens. <laughs> It's a good thing to note. So yeah. Tom Kench is banned. We're going to get the Seraphine in here. Something I haven't seen, I think, since maybe like week one yeah. of the NECC play last semester. So we haven't seen that in quite a long time. Yeah. But uh, it is going to be put in here. can be played mid or support. I think it did get buffed we this could. patch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she got... Ad uh, I was looking at the patch notes earlier. She got adjusted is what they put her down okay. at. But uh, if I remember correctly, it was like... The cooldown on her W got a little lowered at the higher ranks, I believe. Uh, and then a couple other changes I don't remember 100%. Uh, but Seraphine ADC is also something that we have Ooh. seen. So right? it, and it could be a Fasting Senna then. Yeah, it could be a Fasting Senna with the Seraphine, right? Because Seraphine is one of those champs where she can be flexed to support, but she really shines when she has that gold of it. Yeah, makes sense. We are going to get the Karma pick in here for St. Clair. I've seen a lot of... Aphelios Karma, Jinx Karma from them lately, so nothing too surprising here. It'll most likely be FaZe piloting that champion, and you know, not necessarily super standard bot lanes, but definitely a couple champions that we've seen quite often over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. And there is the pick we were talking about, that Jarvan in the jungle. Gonna fill in that engage role for McMaster Maroon, so they've got a pretty good comp going with these first three picks in my opinion. I think so too. I think definitely a lot of engage potential, especially with the Jarvan Seraphine combo. The fact that you can channel that ult through Jarvan on the EQ, absolutely insane range extension there, as well as the Senna Global. We're going to have Kane coming through for St. Clair. So that's going to be a very, very interesting choice here. Not necessarily something too standard. And you know, typically you see the Jarvan instant answer is going to be the Zen Zhao, but going with the Kane here. Yeah, and last week we did see Fresh actually give us a, a perfect game mm -hmm. on Kane, perfect KDA in the first game, and then he did end up dying once in the second game, I believe, with uh, just going a little deep into the base trying to grab a kill. Um, but yeah, very, not the strongest pick right now, but definitely I think something Fresh is very comfortable on, uh, and I think he knows how to work it into the team comp very well. Sankler are going to ban out Jax here. Actually, I was surprised. I thought oh, McMaster would be the ones to ban it, but I guess uh, they do have that last pick selection so they're going to want to keep that for a potential counter pick for ricky we are going to get rise coming through mcmaster we've seen a lot of rise bands uh throughout it's, it's interesting because we see a lot of rise picks a lot of rise bands throughout like not just pro play but in collegiate play um but if you look at the statistics rise actually isn't that great of a champion right now he isn't in an amazing spot i think the thing is the fact that he has that global ultimate, him and Twisted Fate yeah. may not be like the strongest champions right now, but their ultimates, because of Unleashed Teleport, make them like two of the strongest champions in the game. Yeah, for sure, right? Because it, it, it always going to come back to the bot lane, right? Yeah. You can you can do so much with that. Uh, and Rise also scales definitely a little harder than Twisted Fate as yeah. well. I mean, once you hit that level 16, regardless of the spot he's in, he's always going to do damage, right? Uh, and especially, you can also flex him into that tank build that we've been seeing, which because he scales with mana, he's still going to be putting out a fair amount of damage yeah. for your team, while also just being a CC bot. The final ban is going to be Corky and Sandra for both sides. Corky dropped a lot in priority over the last couple of weeks just because of the nerf to his package the fact yeah. that it went from five minutes to, i believe it was eight minutes on that so uh it still uh, it's funny to me how much these global alts mean now to team right like yeah. you see from mcmaster the band out not only just twisted fate but the rise as well as the corky and you know champions that and mid lane champions that might not necessarily be super strong in the meta but because of their global ultimates make them strong enough to cover the bot lane and that's all you really need as a mid laner right now yeah and syndra another one of those control mages that can just like out pressure in the lane shove the lane uh and get a roam off really because of like just the way she can kind of bully in lane with uh by setting up her balls in the right spots and we do see fourth pick leblanc coming out from mcmaster maroon pretty good blind pick there and i was gonna say too i think syndra also like you're saying because of their own potential i feel like senna seraphine is a very squishy bot lane susceptible to ganks because they're not super mobile yeah. so i think uh they're looking to try and maybe cover up that weakness a little bit here obviously jarvan um 
probably will be hovering around that bot lane trying to find an advantage there. Um, but LeBlanc, pretty safe blind pick, nothing too crazy, pretty standard. Mid lane, Ari going to be the answer for St. Clair. Was slightly nerfed, but still very, very strong right now. Yeah, I, I, we were talking about this a little bit before. I, we just don't think Ari was nerfed like in the right spots, yeah. really. Um, it's definitely, she definitely did take a bit of a hit, but it's not really going to affect her in the overall lane. Yeah, I think her kit, because of that extra reset and all the buffs that came through, I think she's still very strong and very potent in the meta. Um, and Scion is actually going to be the last pick for St. Clair here. Going to be the blind pick top lane for Ricky here. And I think they did need some tank on this team. Yeah. I definitely think uh, not a bad choice here. But now is McMaster Maroon the option on what they want to go in the top lane? But I do think as well for them, you do kind of need some kind of tanky bruiser to try and round out this comp. Some engage. There it is. And that's going to be Anar coming through. I think really good team comp here, McMaster Maroon. I think the only weakness I see for them is going to be that disengage factor, right? Like you have the Nar and Jarvan and the LeBlanc give really, really good engage. But I think if St. Clair can get the jump on you with really good uh, charms from Ari or with knockups from Kane, I think it's going to be very difficult for McMaster Maroon try and get away from a fight that they don't want to hop into. Yeah, it seems like the Masters team comp was much more like thought out for the just the team comp in general, how they're going to work together, how they're going to mesh together throughout this game. Uh, whereas St. Clair, we're, we're just seeing we're seeing a fresh comfort pick on the cane. We're seeing uh, Zephyrot Ari come out, who's very strong, can kind of slot into anything, uh, and then just a solid bot lane. Uh, one thing we haven't seen in a long time is actually the Ricky Scion. I don't think we've yeah, seen that since last semester. Last oh, yeah. season. I haven't seen it since he got... Uh, I don't want to say it harshly, but he, he did get absolutely destroyed on that sign last time he played it. So I think maybe his confidence on the champion took a little bit of a hit, but it is a pretty safe blind pick top lane right now. Mm -hmm. And Nar, not a bad answer to it, but I, I really feel like this top lane, again, isn't really going to mean too much in the early game. I think a lot of this is going to come down to these Jarvan ganks and how impactful they can be. Kane, if he can get an early transformation, would be absolutely huge because, I, like I said, bot lane for McMaster Maroon, very squishy and not super mobile. So I think if the mid-jungle duo from St. Clair starts roaming towards that bot lane, especially with the Karma speedups, I think that is going to cause a lot of problems for the for this McMaster Maroon bot lane. Yeah, yeah, like you said, they just they don't really have the disengage except for the LeBlanc who can kind of get out of there, but they don't have anything to stop St. Clair from engaging. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely going to be something they have to look out for. They do have a lot of potential here for Realms as well, though. They're mid. The mid-jungle duo of LeBlanc, Jarvan can have such a big impact uh, on these side lanes, right? Like, mm -hmm. that burst potential they have, especially in the early game when LeBlanc gets level 6, uh, absolutely massive. Yeah, definitely. And then the CC lock coming down in the bot lane as yeah. well. I mean, you've got Seraphine, who she's got her, her slow, which can convert into a root. She's got the charm ultimate, which is passes through the enemy, ch or enemy and ally champions, actually. Mm -hmm. Doubles its range. Uh, but one thing that I feel like is very, like, not talked about... The Senna Q slow, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's always up. She's gonna be constantly autoing. You're seeing that every four or five seconds, and it really is. It's one of those ones that you don't you don't think about until you're sitting there and you're like, why? It's why true. am I slowed it's so true. much? Right? Through the entire minion wave too. Like yeah. th like she's on the other side of the lane, and you are like thirty percent slowed. I think it is. Yeah. Just it's it's a rough one, really. So yeah. this bot lane definitely has a lot of poke potential. Uh, but I can see maybe the carbon nullifying that a little bit. Um, and then St. Clair, I want to say they scale a little bit harder into the late game. Yeah, I think so too. The I mean, obviously, you have Senna and Seraphine, which is going to give you a lot, especially the Senna is going to give you a lot of uh, late game scaling. But I think for St. Clair, you have the Jinx, which is the quintessential late game carry, right? I think Jinx mm -hmm. and Affiliates, like we said many times throughout the broadcast so far, are the best late game scalers right now in the game. So I think. That is definitely something to watch out for. And, you know, the mobility that she gets when she has her hyper up plus the ability, the mobility that Karma can give her is going to really give them an advantage in that late game because I think, mm -hmm. you know, Jarvan later on in the game isn't really going to mean too much. If he lands knockup, that's great. If he lands the ultimate um, on one of your carries, it's really good, but does end up, get a, end up getting blown up very fast. So you have to find a really good combo of either LeBlanc finding a really good assassination in the back line or, like, really good engage from this Nara jarvan seraphine combo. To really, you know, get on that back line, find at least two members, and that's really going to make the difference. Here we are. Game number one starting out, and we already have an engagement game? here. Never mind. It's a pause. A little, no, little bit of lag there, but Jaeger is going to get charmed right at the starting. The Scion Q fully going to fully gonna charge up. He's going to get the knockup, and Zephyrot is going to grab first blood there. 
for St. Clair. A good start there. And St. Clair going for that level one invade, not something you're expecting all the time. And, you know, you always got to be ready for it, though. You always got to be ready for that level one invade. Um, not respecting the fact that they could go towards the tri bush there. And that's going to mean that they will take the 1 0 lead in the field department. And I was going to say, actually, the last time that we saw Ricky play Sion, I believe it was against Danny Boy. And I believe it was the time that he I, lost. I was about to say, I think I do recognize the name. I don't yeah. think I was casting, but I definitely think I did watch that game because uh, the name does seem familiar. As well as the jungler, Shaw Ozzy, I believe I remember that one as well. Yeah, he was that Ivern that absolutely yeah. smoked them in the preseason. So definitely two players there to watch for the side of McMaster. And overall, I think the one one kill lead gives the Doran's ring over to the Ari early on in the game, which means we'll have a little bit of extra wave clear with the extra mana. Should have some extra pressure as well. Fresh getting a little bit closer to his transformation to start off the game, which is always nice for a game player. Yeah, for sure. He is going to get uh, the range uh, stacks off of that. I want to say, I feel like you should try to go red this game. Uh, like, possibly just to add uh, a little bit more tankiness to the team. Because if Scion's not there, you're getting blown up. Yeah, regardless. I think, it, it, I mean, you could go either way for yeah, this one. I, I think the fact that they have the, send, the pretty squishy members, especially when Nar is not going to be in mega form means the assassination route definitely could be viable and i think for sure is kind of the stronger one right now to be honest level one here for ricky though is going for this fight against danny somehow was actually winning it despite being leveled down danny can hit the proc off here but chaz egan it collapse on the jungle force to flash out knock up not going to come through charm is going to miss oh flash not going to make it but it's going to get the q anyway that's going to be zephyrod finding Z here charm going to come through not going to be able to get trapper but two kills already here for zephyrod a good start to the game for this Ari. yeah shaw just went he went a little too deep trying to get like a little cheeky invade there at the starting, but St. Clair, they had the vision set up there on River. Yeah, they knew that he was coming in there and see already stacked wave up in top lane for the Nar on the sign. And you expect that a lot, I think, until you get towards a couple, a, you know, half an item or an item there for the Scion. It is just going to be Nar trying to get him in. Knockup going to come through here. Zephyrot going to be here first, though. Shaz is not going to have as much help. Fresh going to be able to queue back through that and get a little bit of healing. The slug looking for something here, but no engagement. And you already see how far behind this invade puts the Shazi, right? The fact that Zephyr now is going to have permanent push lane in the mid lane there against this LeBlanc because of that blue buff is going to make life so difficult for this Jarvan in his own jungle. Yeah, we are seeing LeBlanc is end up going to end up getting a level lead here. So she might be able to do something with that, but the blue buff is going to be very hard to play around. I mean, he's just sitting there at full mana, going to constantly push this wave. He is going to off to move top with Fresh, uh, possibly just going to grab the Scuttle Crab, but it seems like they are just going to go for the invade uh, as they have that info on the Jarvan being bot side. Yeah, I was going to say, now, now you can just do that, right? You have blue buff on both the cane and the Ari, so you can't stay, here for, stay out here for a very long time. Try and take as much stuff away from this Jarvan as you can, and it's going to force the Blanc to back, go for a reset so she can at least match some of the roams. Dark Seal going to be picked up, though. going to be pretty good, but the Ari on the back, you should expect to see you know, at least a, a couple of AP items come through, and it's really going to be tough when you see this LeBlanc trying to come back and even force roams out of the, uh, you know, get some roams out of this mid lane. Yeah, and we are going to see Zephyroth go for a back here. He's going to get a pretty nice buy off of that. 30 CS almost, two kills up. Uh, he is going to get Merc Treads right off the starting, which is going to help his laning power even more. Um, but in the bot lane here, we actually saw Barlow. He's already setting up for the scale. He grabbed the coal there on the first back, and he's going to start stacking that up. 2,000 gold there on Zephyroth at the starting of this game here at just about five minutes. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't mind the Merc Treads. I don't know if it's, you know, the greatest purchase. I don't know if I really like it that much. How's he going to go for the knockup? Not going to quite get it, though. And Will means Zephyroth able to escape that for the moment. Chunk him down quite low, actually. Got them both down to half HP. Ricky Ricky's. with the roam here, but... Trapper with a good ward there, able to spot out Ricky before he can get the knockup. Trapper going to go for the engagement, actually, but Zephyrod again with the smirk treads. He's going to trade better than he will. Swift Slug going to move up here. Faze going to be here for an answer, but a little bit of poke down, not going to mean too much. Uh, he's ready to deny this vision here, but they are both just going to trade off grabbing those control wards. Meanwhile, both ADCs are going to be filling up in the hot lane. Uh, and I like the idea from Ricky there, right? Go down, try and see if you can support Zephyroth there after he's already got this lead. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really lead to anything, but 
Definitely a, a smart play, I'd say, considering how how little impact all blade has, like we've been talking about. Garvin looks like he's going to walk up here, but he's going to spot it out on the ward. And you see already the farm differential there in the top lane. Nar went for a back and CP'd into lane. Went for the call because he knows he's going to have a huge advantage in the early game on this Nar. Able to just constantly shove out the waves, farm up as much as he wants to. And the Scion can't really do anything about it. Root going to come through, actually. Jaeger going to get ignited here. One more auto for Barlow. Not going to be able to get it, though, with the extended range. Gonna force him back out here. Maybe looking for a cheeky W onto Jaeger here. Swift Still engagement. Heal gonna have to come through. Swift Slug gonna be healed up as well as a shield. Keep him alive for the moment, but nobody going down quite yet. Faze still sticking around here. Gonna get a nice Q on a Swift Slug there. Barlow gonna get hit by the Q. Oh, these people are so close to dead, but won't actually mean anything. You see the Karma and the Senna shielding there, or Karma and the Seraphine shielding there is just so powerful in this bot lane. Yeah, that was a roller coaster of a fight there. It seemed like one side was going to win. Sephiroth is going to find a nice little charm and a trade there onto Trapper. But in the bot lane there, it seemed like Jaeger was so low. Barlow went in. He's going to soak one shot there, one tower shot there. Uh, and then they are actually going to be forced to burn the heal. Uh, but they are going to trade that out for Seraphine's heal as well as Swift Slug's barrier. Uh, so not too, too bad. Jarvan once again set up here towards bot side. Barlow and FaZe, they can't do much. They're both very low and fresh. He's just going to have to try and move around this Jarvan, but Jarvan is looking for something. Yeah, it's really tough right now because they had to reset. They weren't able to get that. Ooh, Ari going to be here, actually. Shah Z only level 4. All going to come through. Not going to hit the charm, though. I mean, Zephyr can have a lot of trouble here. Now, no mana as well. Forced him to back off. So, do, they do prevent the dragon from being started up. But, uh, oh, actually, dragon came through. I didn't even see that. Kane got the dragon earlier on, so... Looking for something in mid, but Jarvan only level 4 right now. Is down 30 farm against Kane. Kane already level 6. For Shah Z, that early invade cost him so much in this game so far. For sure. Yeah, trying to go for that and losing that crucial, like, 15 seconds of pathing you get at the starting. It just put him so far behind. Not to mention uh, round 2 filled ganks now. Uh, and not even being able to grab like a flash off of Zephyrod or something like that. And then we saw him kind of, he was kind of just sitting around bot Tribush waiting for something to happen. Uh, but like we saw that fight in bot lane, both teams just ended up backing off after a couple summoner spells were burned. And that's another 30, 40 seconds that the Jarvan was just unable to VCS in. Yeah, it's definitely been tough for him. Ricky getting get spotted out in the top half here. Both junglers going to be hovering around, but... I think, oh, actually, all going to come for Danny Boy. Wants to go for this kill onto Ricky, but Zephyrock going to be here to support. Shaz, he can map here as well. Knockup going to come through onto Ricky here. Getting quite low. Trapper going to be here to help out. Flash going to come through for two members. Blast going to get him all the way back. Danny going to get knocked up. Ricky going to live there somehow. And will be able to take the kill onto Danny. Zephyrock going to be chasing out Shazi and Trapper here. Fresh on his tail. Flash going to come through. He is going to get the charm. And that's going to be Shaz going down. Charm. Fresh going to find the kill. And now, big early game advantage for St. Clair. Yeah, and this is why we see Ricky win so many of these matchups. These qu the quick thinking and improvising that we see. Flash over to the Blast Cone, going to force Shah Z back over, as well as the Gnar. He is going to force his leap, as we're going to see here. So ultimate gets burned, leap back over Ricky. They are going to be moving up towards that bush. Zephyrok comes up, Shah Z really low. Both, both of them flash over, and he's just going to hit that Blast Cone back, and Trapper is just too far out to help his teammate there. Yeah, the key there was the fact that Shazi forced a flash over the wall to try and help get that kill onto Ricky, but able to blast plant, blast plant black back over, and his entire team is on the other side of that wall just waiting for that blast plant. So, really smart play there by Ricky, able to live, which was the key. And uh, I mean, obviously now Shazi down, you know, 40, 45 farm here in the early game, hasn't even hit level six yet really struggling now and it really comes from that one failed invade as well as that failed gank in mid which, and now you see not only is it affecting him in the gold part but such a big gap in the mid lane as well just such a huge advantage for Zephyron and you know it's hard right because you're you're this LeBlanc you're Trapper you're sitting there you're thinking I haven't even died once to this Ari and Ari is two kills and two assists like uh, what are you supposed to do in that situation yeah not to mention trapper has been putting not well i wouldn't say as much as zephyrod he's been putting up pretty good map pressure as well right he's rotating to these objectives that are happening he's rotating to these little skirmishes that are happening in river but just unable to find something as the cc just comes out first i just wanted to point out so it was really funny so they were actually planning shots he had floated down to this bot bush they were planning to do a lane gank but if you could go to that one ward between the two pink wards on the outside of the Ooh. dragon pit there, 
They actually never mind, I don't have time for that. There's gonna be engagement here in the ball lane right now. Kane gonna go in on Swift Slug. He's gonna pop the ultra. Is he gonna be here to support? Heal gonna come through. We'll keep him alive. Alt Seraphine gonna come through. Nice flash there to dodge it out. And in the end, it will be everyone walking away. Meanwhile, Zephyrog. the mid lane trapper. Zephyr going in on Trapper here. Trapper pretty low. Shazi here low as well. Ignite gonna come through. Will stay alive for the moment. Engages all over the map. Vicky gonna hit the Q, but not gonna be able to land it on Danny Boy. And Danny Boy will take down Rick. Rick can go for the passive. See if he can try and catch up to Danny Boy here, but won't be able to. So he's just gonna farm some minions. So in the end, engagement's all over the map, but it's just gonna be one kill over for McMaster Maroon. <laughs> that was. Once again, another roller coaster of fights there, but in the top lane, we see that's where the ranged advantage comes in for this NAR. Ricky trying his best. The Qs are landing, but that's about all he has. Yeah, and uh, I was going to say, so we didn't get to point it out, but there was one ward between those two pink wards they didn't spot out, and that's why the lane gank didn't work. Yeah. They just went for the reset. Really, really smart ward placement there by FaZe because, you know, it, I mean, it was kind of lucky because there is two control wards there and it was able to get squeezed in between both of them. But, uh, yeah, it worked out for St. Clair. And now Dragon up. Uh, I think if you're the side of McMaster, you can't even think about contesting this Dragon right now. Your jungler is 50 farm down everywhere at, like, mid lane. You're 30 farm down plus two kills. Like, the gold discrepancy is just so huge. You see the Prowlers now built for Kane while, you know, Jarvan's sitting on just the Iron Spike whip. It, it's going to be so difficult to try and go for this, but... Looks like they want to try and opt into it here. Yeah. Not to mention the Kane is also halfway to mana immune, which is really going to help him out once that flips uh, as the tier is stacking. But yeah, they do decide to start this Infernal Drake. Barlow and Kane's FaZe, they know about it. Kane transformed fresh coming in. He's looking for the assassination. The, the traps are going to come out from Jinx. And the blue team is going to grab the dragon. Shaw Ozzy. Nice little smite there. Are they going to be able to make it out fresh? He's looking for something. Lots of damage onto Swift Slug there with just the W. And that's the Prowler's Claw effect. When you're up with that much items, that much AD this early into the game, you can just do that. But both players going to be moving out here. Jaeger just zoning off fresh. Fresh, he's going to opt to disengage there. Let Jaeger back. But now, now's the problem, right? The fact that he's transformed at 12 minutes with the Prowler's Claw built, like... This Jarvan is never going to be able to do anything in his jungle. Kane's just going to be all over it, looking for as many kills as he can. Now, now like, it's just going to be such a struggle for this bot lane, especially because constantly, probably just going to end up farming his bot, the other team's bot jungle, and then look for a gank or a dive or anything because he's so strong right now on this Kane and with the blue activated, it's going to be so tough for these squishy members of McMaster to survive. Yeah, and like, it's that's even emphasized by just the amount of vision that McMaster has been forced to put down in their own yeah. jungle, right? They're burning control wards to ward their red buff, uh, ward their raptors push there. We're seeing a ward down there at the bottom just to stop any tower dies. It's it's really rough because you can't get any aggressive vision down to try and uh, to try and get any invades off. Put Kane behind uh, because you're just the threat is too much there. Uh, and as we're gonna oh. see, Fresh dodging the Seraphine slow. There's going to be a lot of damage coming out. Flash comes out, and he is able to dodge that Kane ult onto Jaeger. He is going to disengage there. TP coming in from mid lane, and that is the defensive TP that we see right before the teleport gets unleashed. Uh, and that that is the one way you can use teleport now. Yeah, I think it was a good idea there for St. Clair, unfortunately. Just couldn't quite find that engage. You saw really early on, actually, Barlow burning his Flash just to try and get the W slow to set them up, but... Zephyrock gonna be engaged here. Root gonna come through. Trapper Might just has to auto a few more times. That's gonna be a Might shutdown. Zephyrock with a big misstep there in the mid lane. It will cost him his life. And now LeBlanc finding advantage here, but Swift Slug gonna be all alone. Dive gonna come through here. He's just gonna go down. Fresh gonna get autoed twice, but that turret gonna be quite low here. Gonna go for the engagement on Jaeger. Trying to get some life steal up, but it's not gonna matter. Jaeger gonna take him out with a couple autos. That is gonna be Fresh going down as well. So three for one across the map in favor of McMaster here. Yeah, not very good for St. Clair. Barlow is able to find that first turret, which is going to bring the gold a little bit back. Their lead a little bit larger. Not uh, really, because you just lost that top lane turret. Yeah. So it's actually been pretty much negated. Harold going to come down here in mid lane as well. So actually, it's going to be quite a good push here from the side of McMaster. And a good response, because they were down 3k about two minutes ago, and now they're within a k. Yeah, we are seeing a very nice rally here from the side of McMaster. Uh, nice team play, regardless of how far behind the jungler is. 
I think the unfortunate part of that gank or of that tower dive bot lane. What? Well, yeah, I I see the hole breaker in the top lane there. The uh, <laughs> the hole breaker Nar, even though they did nerf it on the range champion Nar, also melee during his uh, ultimate form. I don't know if that would change the hole breaker passive. I I'm assuming it would. I'm assuming there. it would flip to the melee one. I'm not actually 100% sure. Either way, full breaker. I want the item removed from the game, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, in the bot lane there, seeing FaZe die to the tower shots was a huge one. Yeah. Uh, that's that's just going to give that much more gold to the Senna here in the bot lane and even out the gold distribution more. Uh, we're back to a 2k lead uh, for St. Clair. Uh, meanwhile, both bot lanes have swapped to mid here. Yeah, it's kind of surprising, though, because that ball lane turret is still pretty much intact. So it's going to force this LeBlanc to try and lane against the Ari. And Ari has a slight advantage now. It does have uh, Ludens as well as the Merc Treads, but isn't as big as it once was. So I definitely think if you can get the Jarvan to start roaming down there. Actually, engagement here. Charm not going to make contact, though. It means they are going to be forced back off this one as well. Shazzy coming up. So Miss Charm there, unfortunately, means no engagement can come through. And I feel like that's another problem that Sanctuary is going to have, right? Because Kane opted into the blue isn't going to have that knock up from his w he's not really going to be able to have that cc potential here a fresh going to go in on shot z going to knock down shot z quite low but there's Huge three shield. there's four people here from the side of big masters try and hold him up there and we'll force him back out so went for a play did not work out and that, i'd say that's the problem with going assassin here right is the fact that there's so much healing and shielding from the seraphine and senna unless you take one of them out really early in the fight it's going to be hard to actually 100 to zero somebody yeah, and we are seeing the Oblivion Orb come out very early from phase here, which is definitely a very strong item to grab for the laning phase. One thing I might want to see, though, is actually a Serpent's Fang from Fresh here. Uh, considering the size of the shield we just saw, mm. there's also Barrier on the Senna. The Senna ult also grabs a massive shield. Uh, meanwhile, we're seeing a fight here in the river. Danny Boy getting hit, stuck out by that knockup. Charm coming through. Two players from St. Clair gonna get Charm. Shaw Ozzy gonna find the first kill onto Fresh. Oh, it's actually Jaeger that grabbed the kill. Shaw Ozzy gonna grab another one onto FaZe. Danny Boy, he's still alive here. Ricky trying to go in deep for him, but he just can't. The passive gonna come out. Gonna see if he can find anything onto Trapper here, but the health bar is ticking down, and that is gonna be another team fight win. For McMaster Maroon. Four for one on that one. And I, I think the big difference maker, again, is the fact that you have this Seraphine with Moonstone already built because of the Fasting Senna. It, it's so hard for you. Well, I guess not Fasting Senna, technically, because it is Senna support. So uh, I think the fact that you have the Senna already with Moonstone is just so much yielding. And the problem is Sinclair doesn't have that 100 to 0 potential, right? Like, you do have a lot of burst with Kane and with Ari, but you don't really have that crazy assassination potential and with seraphine and with senna they can just heal you up between those bursts of damage that these players are going to do and it makes it really really difficult fresh going to try and go in on danny boy here he is down two levels going to get the smite through going to get the q as well fresh new for the auto here danny boy waiting for him to come out that's going to be a q in and he will get the shot down there so fresh with a solo kill onto danny boy yeah making use of that blue form he is going to find that assassination even with the hole breaker uh, he is going to have enough damage to pull that one out. Mid lane here, not too, too much happening, but Jaeger and Swift Slug. Now they have that, they have enough items to be able to push the lane here. Uh, and it is going to get pretty rough for Barlow and FaZe. Yeah, I think the fact that FaZe also down two levels here is make it really difficult. Shazzy floating around. Root going to come through. Cyan ult, not going to find anybody. Though. They will be able to escape from that one. Flash going to come through from Seraphine as well. Ricky trying to hunt them down here in the top lane. There's going to be a lot of people joining in here. All five members. Barlow going to find Swift Slug with the ult there. Shaw is he going to get chased down. Zephyroth going to use one charge of the ult to try and catch up with them. Willie's the second as well. Ult going to come through, but that's not going to matter. A double kill in for the Jinx. And St. Clair going to win out that fight very, very cleanly. Yeah, very nice play there. Uh, unfortunate that Ricky's ult didn't find anyone, but Barlow and Zephyroth are able to rally back and pick that one up. But are going to see once again in the mid lane here Danny boy the range the range onto this scion lots of damage coming out he's also got the tabbies built up there both top laners actually opting for hole breaker it's just going to be another wet noodle fight like we typically see barlo face and zephyroth coming down here for the support barlo lots of damage coming onto Danny boy he is going to opt to leap out that is going to be the disengage we'll be able to escape that one i'm kind of surprised that scion went for the hole breaker i mean obviously I think the stats definitely lend him quite a bit uh, of 
agency in the side lanes. And I think he does, you know, need to match the Nar in a sense. Um, but we do have a pause here, I think. So we're going to get a replay in the meanwhile. But we'll get back to you in just a second on what the issue is. But meanwhile, we can look at this fight. And I think you can see on the map where, you know, Jaeger forced off from his teammates. There has to flash upwards instead of down towards the rest of them. And that means that's free pickings for the Jinx. We'll find the second kill as well as Zephyr cleaning that one up. And St. Clair with just a really smart engage there, right? So, like, realistically... Uh, St. Clair, you can see there, has a 3.5k gold lead right now. Has decent items on the Jinx. Um, it still is holding on to the lead, but you can see as we get later on in the game, especially when Senna starts picking up items and when Seraphine starts picking up more items, it's going to be really difficult for this cane to have any real impact on the game. Yeah, for sure. And we did see Seraphine also opt for the Moonstones. Like yeah. we were saying, uh, I know you said it's not really a fasting Senna. I want to say... It kind of is. It is fast. I, I, it's yeah. always fasting Senna it's, when it's, it's Senna always support. Technically. <laughs> yeah, technically. Um, and we also saw Senna off for the Kraken Slayer as well, which yeah. is kind of off the typical support build that we'd see with the Lethality Poke build. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like they are going to be going for that, uh, more so towards that strategy. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, a lot of the fights that we are seeing McMaster win here, uh, it often comes down to Zephyrop missing a crucial yeah. charm. And then the Seraphine alt is just so wide, it's able to kind of split apart uh, St. Clair there, and they're just losing out on these fights. We're seeing Shah Z in that one dragon fight down near the river uh, for the second or third Drake there. Uh, he was in perfect position to hit that Jarvan ultimate to get the pit down uh, and get a quick assassination onto Fresh. I, I think for me too, like I was saying earlier on, like because Kane opted for blue and didn't go for red, he doesn't have that W knockup. So outside of Scion, other like Ari Charm is the only form of CC you have, right? So if that doesn't make contact, if he doesn't land that onto a key member of McMaster Maroon, it's really really tough to get into fights because you, you don't have any kind of hard CC engage where you look at McMaster, they have Jarvan, they have Nar, um, they even have like a root, you have the Seraphino, they have so many options to engage a fight, whereas St. Clair you don't really have amazing engage options, right? So I think you have to set up fights very well. You have to find really, really key picks. And you saw there the fact that they were able to find those members of McMaster um, all together and got a good pick on them, a really good charm, uh, made the difference. And that's why they were able to just roll over the team fight, no problem. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I definitely with with the Scion Ultimate and the Scion Q being like one of the main forms of engage, uh, it's really easy for someone like the Jarvan, someone like the Senna to give the movement speed, the Jarvan's able to dash out of there. It's really easy for McMaster to just block that initial burst of engage uh, and then kind of just play the, play the fight around their zoning, around their sustain uh, that St. Clair's comp just can't keep up with at this point. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be tough. They do have a decent amount of disengage with the Karma. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it, they can find the right escapes. But I think, like, like you said, it's going to be very tough for them moving forward in the game to really try and win it out because he not opting for this red makes it very tough for them to really sustain themselves in fights. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but we are seeing Barlow. He is putting out a lot of damage. So mm -hmm. you've got that Jinx insurance. You went uh, for the Gale Force game too, ADC which insurance. was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is definitely interesting. Uh, I would have... I, I don't think he needed the Kraken Slayer, but seeing Gnar come out, he's got the Tabbies, he's got the Hullbreaker. It might have been something that they actually wanted on this. Yeah, on this I, I think, like I said, though, like the fact that they have so much engage for the side of McMaster Maroon. You have the Gnar, you have the Jarvan, like you have the Seraphine. The Gale Force is really going to be key because if, Car if uh, Jinx goes down here, you really don't have a ton of damage right like, mm -hmm. like i said the cane's gonna become more and more uh irrelevant throughout the game because he's playing assassin cane i think uh, you know as the game goes on too you're already not gonna have as much of an impact so if this jinx goes down it's really gonna be a lot of your late game damage a lot of your team fight damage out the window so i think as much as i want to see the kraken slayer for the damage you kind of have to go for the gale force because if you get engaged on and you lose your life it, it's really gonna be tough for me to see st Clair winning fights yeah, the thing is, too, uh, the only real peel options they have is the Karma, uh, as well as maybe, like, a well-placed Ari Charm. Oh, but going back into Yay. game after some technical difficulties, and we do say three members of St. Clair are going to grab the bot inhib, but trade it out. McMaster is going to grab St. Clair's middle inhib. Meanwhile, Fresh gets a gets stunned there from Danny Boy, and the well-placed alt, and they are going to pick up that kill. Uh, so, I... I 
I don't really know what we just went back into, but... Yeah, uh, I don't know either, lots so... Lots of trades coming out on the map. 5k gold lead for St. Clair. It seems like they also grabbed another dragon in this time. Ricky in the mid lane here. Once again, the dash through from Shah Z. He is going to use the hit onto FaZe. Ricky, he gets knocked up and can't finish off the Q. He's, he's getting... He's getting interrupted during all of these queues, I feel like. Yeah, Ricky gonna get abandoned here in the mid lane. Can't risk that Jinx going down, giving away that 500 gold shutdown. So it will mean it will get out. Zephyrog gonna get trapped for the meanwhile, though. And, uh, okay, so, I mean, the push is... Okay, so, thank you, production. So, Saints got Baron. We traded inhibitors. And now they will be pushing through here. I think Baron not active on anyone just yet, though. I think, I think everyone that had Baron ended up going down or it expired or something along those lines. But... Okay, yeah. so last I remember, I think we were like 15, 16 minutes in. Or maybe I think it was a little more. I think 17 uh, or 18. I think we were just about 20, I want to say. I, so we I, lost I, about I, four minutes there. And in, the, yeah. in that time, Baron was traded. They got mid inhib and bot inhib and kills all across the board for everybody. But goal difference still about the same as when we left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. Uh, we are going to see... Arlo, he's racking up a big, big shutdown here. So it looks like everyone, or it looks like the Baron did just expire, uh, considering Barlow still doesn't have a death, and the Baron is off. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like it did just expire there. But we are seeing 11k gold. Uh, nice little chunk up on the Seraphine there. Uh, not too much happening at the current moment. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can look at items now, right? So you yeah. see, never mind. Fresh is going to go on. So I don't even have time to talk about it. He's going to get chunked down quite low. W is going to find him. Oh, Ricky. Ricky charging unstoppable in. through that whole thing. Not going to find Jarvan, though. We'll flash away. And a quick pick there over onto the center. So there will be some kind of impact that uh, this cane will have with that Prowler's spot. I think will help him out. Team fight going to come through here. Barlow going to get knocked up here. He's going to force flash out. He's going to get charmed by Seraphine. Has to walk towards the other team. Will survive for the moment. Flash come through for Danny Boy. Not going to catch the point yet. Trying to find this Nar. Hyper doesn't even need it. He is going to take down the Jinx without it. That's going to be Karma. Not going to get stunned up. Phase trying to walk away here. Q going to find contact though. Notice St. Clair forced out to the other side. And now with three members alive at full HP from the side of McMaster here. But that doesn't matter. Fresh going to find Trapper. That's going to be a free kill for them. All going to come through for Zephyr. Trying to find Jaeger on the backside. Fresh going to surround him. That's going to be another kill through double for Fresh on the other side of the map here. Danny Boy going to be taking a fight against phase and he is going to win that shot is he going to get cut down here in just a second though by the rest of st Clair. zephra finding another kill and in the end it's a three for two for the side of st Clair. yeah shaw z stacking up a lot of armor here he can't do too too much against zephra when he has all of his abilities up uh, as well he was kind of caught out there with no man after burning his his entire combo really on to try and take down barlow and phase uh, and it was actually going to be Danny Boy that ended up finding FaZe as he was trying to disengage through the Red Star jungle there. Yeah, the key there, too, was the fact that just the edge of the Seraphine ult found Barlow there. And the charm forced him to walk all the way up into Danny Boy's face. So Danny Boy able to flash out. And I was going to say, I thought Danny Boy was going to go down there if he didn't get uh, high, if he didn't get uh, his Mega there. But he actually ended up finding the kill onto Barlow in mini form. So, I mean, just two items through here did just pick up the Black Cleaver and was able to take down uh, Barlow and FaZe there. But... Meanwhile, Game State's still pretty, you know, St. Clair favorite, I'd say. Fresh going to go in for a fight here. Is going to ult Jaeger, but not a great way out. Is going to be forced Jaeger to actually use that Zonya's early on here. Fresh going to dodge away Flash. from that EQ, but it doesn't matter. Shutdown going to come through now with, Bar with Baron available. Yeah, and St. Clair's big. jungler down. That's really, really bad for them. Do you think they can test this? Oh, no. Scion's actually split pushing bot lane. So, he's going to force the Nar back. With no tank, it means they actually aren't able to take the Baron. So... Smart play there by Ricky, just forcing them back to the ball, and it will get a turret out of it. Yeah, he is able to find that. He may just opt to trade his life away here for the second turret. It looks like we are going to see the disengage, actually, but Trapper taking a lot of damage from this full tank Scion. Meanwhile, Wait. he is going to find... Wait a is minute. Is he going to be able to just end the game? The backs are being canceled by St. Clair, so instead, McMaster Maroon has opted to they just, just end. run back they just to end the base. Game. Ricky Lafleur, he's running. Zephyroth, the TP, is going to come in. Zephyroth getting chunked down very fast from Swift Slug. But Ricky, he's chunking down the Nexus. The passive is going to come out. Can he just auto attack the Nexus to death? A lot of damage going down on it. Huge knock up from Danny Boy with his alt there. He is gonna knock uh he is gonna knock Ricky off of the Nexus. Meanwhile, the inhibitor came back up just then. So 
He wouldn't have been able to end, I, was I don't gonna think. say, I'm like, he wouldn't have been able to end, but the good thing is St. Clair got so much out of that. Not only so, did Ricky so get both turrets, but they also forced out the NAR, flat, uh, NAR TP, which got cancelled. They also got the Cloud Dragon, which puts them on Soul Point, as well as forcing McMaster off of that you Baron. Know. So, really, really huge St. Clair. Yes, you did end up sacrificing a couple players, but really, really good map control now, and now you have a 5k, 5.5k gold lead. You're on Soul Point, so a lot of really good things happen there for St. Clair. But uh, the question now becomes, because you have uh, TP for St. Clair on Scion, do you go for this Baron and just force McMaster to choose whether to defend the Baron or to defend your own base? Because if Scion TPs to someone in the bot lane, he can just end because he has his passive, right? Yeah, and we are going to see the TP come out, but he is going to opt TP right into the thick of it here in the mid lane. Trapper going to find him right off the starting. The ultimate not going to find anyone. Jaeger, little caught out here. Big knock up from Ricky. Ricky just in a 1v3 situation here. 1v4. We're seeing Zephyroth do a lot of damage off to Shaw Ozzy in matter. the meantime. Doesn't even matter. Ricky's got so oh, much health. Big ult. Huge charm from Jaeger, but it's not going to do much. Once again, Ricky living with a quarter health. He just keeps getting his shield back up. Not going to take too much damage from it. Karma Shield as well going to come out so, so much. Trapper, Ooh. he is gonna able he is able oh, to dead. find the kill onto Zephyroth, but Fresh is gonna clean that or FaZe is gonna clean that up for him. Too many Fs on this team. And Fresh, is he going are they going for the back door once yeah, again? Yeah, I think I think they can take the inhibitor win yeah. this game, honestly. There's only Danny Boy left. He is gonna be able to make a stand here, but they're gonna go all in on him anyway. Narl gonna get one though, but is gonna end up going down, and that's gonna be it. They will have Jinx with the hyper here and we'll be able to end the game before anyone can come up and a, yeah, a really close the one there a here. pretty crazy at the end but St. Clair <laughs> gonna take game number one of this series and uh we missed about four minutes of action but after that it was all action all action for sure I mean I, I don't think we saw 30 seconds without a team fight yeah there. that was that, that last half of the game was just we come back in Baron's gone and then everyone just as soon as they see someone else on the map all right let's fight <laughs> let's fight let's fight let's fight yeah and and, and Ricky there right that was the pressure, the sheer mm -hmm. pressure forcing McMaster off of that Baron. And then we saw Barlow and FaZe with their long range abilities able to cancel the backs. It bought so, so much time. We literally saw three Mac players forced to run from Baron Pit back to their own base because they simply couldn't back. Yeah, and, and that too, the fact that... They were able to take Cloud Drake off of that and, you know, make a play on Baron, get all the wards down, clear out all of McMaster's wards. It meant that McMaster had to actually walk up there, put their own wards down, and as soon as they walked two steps forward, instant TP from Ricky and right into the mid lane, able to catch out Jaeger there on the uh, on the TP, and it meant that St. Clair pretty much just rolled the entire fight. And I mean, it really started with this jungle pressure, right? Like, you mm -hmm. see the farm right now... Uh, 2-8-8 eight eight for Shazi, 107 farm to 2 16, 9, 5, and 6 fresh. I think that early invade really did cost them. And, I mean, obviously there was a couple other things as well that happened. But for me, again, we see this a lot with Master Maroon. The rest of the team not doing too well, but Danny Boy always popping off on that NAR. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I think it really just came down to the fact that McMaster did not have anything past burst. They did yeah. not really have consistent damage during these team fights. Uh, and in the elongated team fights there, in the end, there wasn't enough damage to kill Ricky. Yeah. There was not enough damage to kill Sion. Yeah, that, he was sitting there 1v3. Yeah, 1v3, constant CC. We saw a Senna root, a Jarvan, uh, Jarvan knockup, I think. I don't think he burnt the ultimate there. We saw the Seraphine ultimate charm come out, and it did not matter. He was just he was just walking straight at them, no fear in his eyes, and he's able to p close out the game in that last team fight. Yeah, I definitely think uh, St. Clair, much better team comp at the end overall. And, I mean, yes, if it went further, I think they could have caught up in scaling. But the fact that Barlow ended up 407 after that Baron fight, it did end up giving a shutdown away. But at that point, I don't think it really mattered. St. Clair had all the momentum, making the right map plays. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for game number one. St. Clair will take. We'll be going into game number two after a short intermission. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon with the second game of this wonderful series.